Hi everyone, it's Dave here. And guess what? I am a victim of the YouTube thought police, the YouTube speech police. I received an email yesterday from them saying that a video that I filmed and uploaded yesterday entitled Are You Sick of Being Lectured To By Doctors, Scientists and Journalists had been removed because it broke their community guidelines and made people feel unsafe. Now, I don't know whether you saw this video because I know that it had a few views before it got removed. But if you did, I'm sure you'd agree with me that I didn't spread misinformation and I didn't, contrary to what they say in their email, provide contradictory evidence or contradict what the World Health Organization or local health authorities have to say on social distancing and self-isolation. It's simply untrue. YouTube do not have a leg to stand on with regard to this. So what I'm going to do is read out my response email I've sent to them where I prove that I've done nothing wrong and they will have no choice other than to re-upload the video. Please, if you're watching this video, please like it, give me a thumbs up and share it as well and, and also comment and let me know what you think because this is of absolute critical importance. We are living in a world now where we don't have free speech. And if I don't have free speech, then you won't have free speech and then the next person won't have free speech. And how it ends up is that even the people who think that they are arbiters, who think that they have the right for what is acceptable free speech or not, they even won't have free speech. And you end up in the absolute pit of despair as history teaches us. So any attempts to to clamp down on somebody's right to have an opinion, they must be highlighted and they must be brought to task. And that, this is exactly what this video is aiming to do now and also what my email response to YouTube aims to do. So please, I would implore you, share this video. And I'm going to explain to you in this video what I talked about and how I haven't broken the community guidelines, how I've not spread disinformation or misinformation, whatever it's called. I've merely just expressed my opinion. So here we go. Here's the email. So I've said, hi, YouTube. This is in response to your decision to remove my recent video entitled, Are You Sick of Being Lectured To By Doctors, Scientists and Journalists? You don't have a case at all here, and I will prove it. Before I break down my video and provide the proof, let me make two very important points. You say YouTube must be a safe, a safe place for all. Taking into account that the mere notion that words can make someone feel unsafe is a ridiculously absurd and dangerous notion, please provide specific details of where and how my words make people feel unsafe. Also, explain how you can be the arbiters of what may or may not make a viewer feel unsafe. And number two, you say YouTube doesn't allow content that explicitly disputes the efficacy of local health authorities or World Health Organization guidance on social distancing and self-isolation that may lead people to act against that guidance. And I say, I'm, I'm afraid I fail to see the relevancy of this. I did not mention social distancing, self-isolation or the World Health Organization anywhere in my video and certainly didn't provide guidance contradictory to their guidance. Please explain. Now for the content itself. Okay, so from the first second to two minutes 44, I read out headlines relating to the NHS in the Guardian newspaper from the last few years. I link to my Facebook page in the description of the video where there is proof of these headlines. Please explain how this breaks your guidelines. 245 to 408. I give some context regarding how the media portrays the NHS and its predicament during the winter and then say that the general debate in the media is politicised and immature. Please explain how this breaks your guidelines. 409 to 617. I ask whether the media is accurately representing the situation or exaggerating it or whether the NHS genuinely is under pressure during the winter but manages to cope just as organisations generally do when they face increased workload. Please explain how this breaks your guidelines. 6.18 to 7 minutes. 
I make the point that the NHS has disproportionately prioritised COVID-19 care over everything else. If you want me to provide evidence that the actual government and media have provided in relation to this statement, then I will. I am not telling lies. Please explain how this breaks your guidelines. 701 to 837. I refer to a winter flu outbreak in 2017-2018 and ask why there were, were not mass restrictions on all of our lives due to this. I ask whether the restrictions that have been imposed are proportional and justified. What's wrong with asking these questions? Please explain how this breaks your guidelines. 837 to 1053. I make the point that people are getting fed up with the way the media portray the NHS and its staff and the fact that they put them on a pedestal and give them a disproportionate amount of airtime. I ask why opinions of people working in the NHS regarding our current situation are given greater credence than people working other jobs. I ask why are doctors using the media to express anti-liberal views and to guilt trip the public into doing what they say. Please explain how this breaks your guidelines. 1054 to 1214. I ask whether people working in the NHS are heroes, as suggested by the media, and ask who, who and why we judge as heroes in our modern world, and if indeed they are. I say that the NHS workers take a Hippocratic oath, and it is their duty to care for patients in a pandemic. This doesn't make them a hero in my eyes. This is my personal opinion. Please explain how this breaks your guidelines. 1215 to 1410. I explain how workers in other settings are facing risks when they go to work. I use my own situation as a delivery driver driving on icy roads and how this makes me feel uncomfortable. I then talk a little about risk and how it's always a factor in our lives. Also, I make the point that workers in other settings haven't been given media exposure like NHS workers, yet they have been crucial in keeping the country going in the last few months. Please explain how this breaks your guidelines. 1450 to 1525. I make the point that the actual reality of the situation may not, note the word may, may not be reflective of how the media is portraying it and how some people may be looking at the situation with scepticism. I also say that society shouldn't be brought to a halt if there is a pandemic. Please explain how this breaks your guidelines. 1526 to 1627, I suggest that it is easier to be an advocate of lockdown if you have a secure full-time job, but that in reality, the cogs of the economy need to keep turning by people going out to work. I ask for the sycophancy to stop and more balance to be given in the media. Please explain how this breaks your guidelines. 1628 to 1637, I say that I am trying to represent the dispossessed, the people who have lost their jobs, and the people who have no hope. Please explain how this breaks your guidelines. 1638 to the end of the video. I ask for people to subscribe and share if they like my content. Please explain how this breaks your guidelines. I now ask that you review your decision and explain in detail where I have broken your guidelines and made people feel unsafe. I then politely request that you reinstate my video for the reasons that I've done nothing wrong have not disseminated misinformation and have merely exercised my right to free speech. So that's the email I've sent to them. So let's see what comes back. I'm not leaving this because it's too important. Free speech must de de be defended at all times. So please, if you do see this video, please do share it in the name of preserving free speech. We are facing massive threats in our modern world and we cannot let them win. Everybody has a right to express their opinion. That is what makes a free and fair and democratic society. Okay, I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.